How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Water Run. My name is Aaron Young. Recently been pretty windy down here. We had some weather move through. I think it was Hurricane Nicole that just hit a few days ago or a week ago. I don't know. Um, but we've got some good weather and it's that time of year where we will start to see Wahoo moving through. The water's been fairly dirty for diving, but after a good blow, it's worth checking. So we're going to head out this morning, uh, see if we can just check the vis visibility and see if maybe we can get into something. Figured I'd bring you along with us. We are here. Water looks fairly blue. It's kind of got like a tint to it. A little green tint. But I'm gonna get suited up and do a drift. See if we can put the first of the year in the boat. That way it's better. So yeah. if you're somewhat new to the channel um, and you've only been watching for a few months or newly subscribed, you may have not seen this, so I'll give you a quick rundown. Today I'm doing what's called blue water spear fishing. Sorry, I got the camera all over the place. Um, I've got these flashers here, which are just reflective mirrors and whatnot. And I've got a much bigger spear gun that I'm that I would normally shoot, and it is attached to a line. So when I pull the trigger, everything comes off, the gun stays with me, and this line is attached to that big buoy. And the reason being, the fish I'm looking for today is um, fast, strong, and extremely powerful. And you can shoot them with the real guns like we normally use, but this method is just a whole lot easier. So what we're doing is we're at our first spot. I'm gonna hop in the water with my flashers and just kind of drift and sit and wait and see if anything comes in. See if I can even load this thing. We may have to tag team it. It's been so long. Welcome back underwater, everybody. As always, I'm going to share my thoughts on some of these dives. And if you're not familiar with blue water spearfishing, I'll try to explain what's going on. So we use these, like I said just a second ago, these big giant guns because they have more range. Pelagic fish tend to stay a little farther away and kind of harder to get a shot on. And for Wahoo, we use these slip tips, and that's what that tip is right there. I'm pulling on and off, and what it is is it goes with the fish and turns sideways like that and toggles. It just tends to hold a little better, um, opposed to a flopper, the traditional shaft that you see us normally use. And what holds it on is this string being tucked under the bands like that. That's what keeps tension on it. So the name of the game here is you jump in the water, you've got these flashers, you're working them, um, and you kind of just sit and wait. If you've ever been whitetail hunting, it's very similar to whitetail hunting. Sitting in a tree stand, but you're floating on the surface of the water. And you're just waiting for a fish to get curious and swim by. So first drift, about 45 minutes, didn't see a single fish. Just, well, single wahoo, just barracudas and bait. Um, so I hop back in for a second drift. And it's funny, these, I've talked about this before, these wahoo that you never see them swim in. You just turn around and they're there. That's why these clips kind of always start with fish in the frame is I turn around and there's a wahoo there. This is about five minutes into the second drift and these things kind of just surrounded me. And I line up and I, I thought it was a super easy shot. I don't know what happened. Half of me thought I was going to try and line up two. You can see there's another wahoo behind it and they were so close. I was like, hey, maybe I can hit two for one. And I take a shot and it the shaft actually skips off the back. The tip didn't hit the fish, but the, the, the shaft itself kind of grazed the back of it. And quite honestly, I don't, I don't know. I don't have an excuse. I just missed. I think maybe I was a little complacent or subconsciously thought I was going to maybe hit two of them. But long story short, I had a great opportunity. Um, got a little greedy and tried to hit two of them, and I missed both. And I normally have um, a real gun clipped off to my float for those scenarios. Say I shoot a fish and there's still more, or if I shoot and miss, I have another gun loaded. 
Uh, but I didn't have that real gun. You can see I, I, I had Will throw it to me. It's just, just an extra gun in the water. You never know. <clears throat> and I didn't have it with me after that shot. Those fish lingered for a second, but it took me so long to get that blue water gun loaded. I didn't have time to get a second shot, shot off on that school. And what I'll do with this real gun is I keep a tuna clip on the back of it. You'll see. And um, I just clip it off on the flashers. Leave it, leave it loaded, facing down, so it's not, and and no one's in danger. And I, uh, I just clip it right off to the float. I got greedy. I let like five of them swim past me because I was waiting for a bigger one, like 10 feet from me. At least I got a video. So after that first heartbreak, I'm just hoping I get another chance. This is our third drift. We had reset. Um, after I saw that school, I wanted to try and get in front of them up current. And luckily enough, they come back in, give me another shot. This one, I take my time a little longer and aim right, and I hit my mark. You can see Will got a topside shot. The buoy taken off. This is pretty cool. It never gets old. Let's go get him. So I let the buoy do its thing. The purpose of that line and that buoy is so I do not have to fight that fish directly. I'll grab this. Now my concern is getting after the fish. I want to get my gun over by the flashers. That way Will can pick them up. Will's responsibility uh, as driving the boat is to clear all my gear and then to keep an eye on me. Obviously make sure I don't get run over by another boat. Stay on top of me just so I need uh, I have assistance if I need it. So I swim over to the flashers, grab that reel, that reel gun. Will's over here doing his thing. I try to always leave my gun right near the float because you can see it a little better. Those those guns can float away and disappear pretty easily. And you can see now the chase is on. That float is what we call tombstoning, and that means that fish is diving, diving down deep. doing my best to catch up with them and this this part of the dive is one of the hardest because you're exhausted you're swimming you're trying to stay calm you don't want to horse this fish I wasn't completely confident in my shot I knew it was an okay shot I just wasn't a hundred percent on it so I do want to baby it a little I'm just pulling that float in slowly if the fish runs I let it run if it gets a little slack I, I, I take some line in you just really don't want to horse this. If you're going to horse it, you better be willing to bet your fish on it. And another thing these, this float and um, float line setup is really good for is it really wears the fish out pretty quickly. If you're using a reel, um, you're physically the one fighting the fish, trying to slow it down and all that, and it puts a lot more pressure on you um, your endurance, your breath, your heart rate, like it's gonna really uh, wear you out a lot faster. These floats are great for this kind, this type of hunting. So now I'm confident in my shot. I can see it's through the belly and kind of back outside of the other, I'd say like the collar or the neck of the fish. I know it's definitely got enough meat um, behind it that I'm, I'm comfortable pulling it in. Make sure I'm clear of that line just in case. You can see that slip tip toggled on the other side just perfectly. And I've got my real gun in my hand just in case. This is actually pretty funny. So I brain this fish, bleed it as I normally would. And I look down and I'm gonna slow this clip down so you can see it. There's a wall of Wahoo that come in to check me out. I mean, there's the camera doesn't pick it up, but there's close to probably a hundred. 
Come here, this fish is dead. Pull that float in as fast as you can. There's like a hundred wahoo right here. So I don't know if it was coincidence, all the commotion that brought these fish in, but um, it was just pretty odd timing. Right when I get the fish in my hands, a, a giant school shows up. and So now I've got my real gun, two bands, and I take a shot and it sticks. And typically that's not something I would do. So what happened was I brain and bled that fish. I know it's still attached to that line and that float pretty good. And that float is right by the boat. And I didn't see any sharks this morning, so I wasn't really concerned about sharks. So I dropped that fish. Will's going to retrieve it on his end, and that gives me the opportunity to try and put another fish in the boat, if that makes sense. Typically, I would just swim that wahoo to Will, but there's a good chance that by the time I would have gotten the fish over to the boat and then back over to the school, they would have been gone. So fish, or fish, Will gets the fish in. Successfully, no issue with sharks, and now the fight is on with the second fish on a real gun. And you have to be even more delicate on these is because you're you're the anchor. With the buoy throw throw me that small gaff. With the buoy, the buoy is able to move around. The fish can fight the buoy. With you being the anchor to the real gun, you have to put typically more tension on a fish than you would like to. Luckily this fish was a little smaller. It didn't spool my reel. A lot of times Wahoo will completely spool a reel if you're not careful. And my main concern is my shot's a little thin, um, and this is a flopper and not a slip tip. The flopper are those little barb-looking tabs that hang off a shaft. The slip tip is a little better for Wahoo, in my opinion. Their meat is pretty soft, and a, a flopper just kind of works through, especially if it's a bad shot, it'll work through and kind of tear through the meat a lot, a lot easier. And as this thing gets closer, I can see I really am not a fan of my shot. I've got one flopper in the fish. It's a double flopper shaft. One flopper in the fish and kind of the tip is just hanging in the belly. So you can you heard I asked Will to give me a gaff because once this fish gets up and I get it close to me it's gonna probably freak out more than it has the entire fight. Um, it's kind of the end game. It's just a part of it. They don't like getting close to you. And if I've got that gaff I've got a better chance of securing this without you know having it slip through my fingers so to speak. I get it close enough, stick one in its tail, thankfully, and wahoo number two. Couldn't believe it. That brain and bleed as always. Hopefully I explained everything fairly clearly. If you got any questions about this blue water process, Please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to get to them. Well, wait till you see this shot. Better show me soon, you're almost out of battery. I'm gonna go buy a lot of tickets. <laughs> Look at it holding on. No. One flopper. <laughs> Whew, that was insane. Literally like a hundred showed up. I, I used that gaff to grab him because I was afraid he was gonna tear out. Oh, redemption, baby. <laughs> I'm a happy camper. Yeah, baby. Oh. So, long story short, and you saw it in the clip, first school came in, and they came so close, I literally didn't even think I had to aim, and I tried to almost line up two, and I got a little greedy, uh, which I instantly regretted that and learned my lesson. And uh, we were able to reset and get in front of these fish, and the school came back in, and an even bigger school, and we've got two in the box. So the reason I'm gutting these is because normally, commercially, I gut them just because. And quite frankly, I barely brought any ice. 
tried to reverse psychology it because anytime I don't bring any ice, I see a ton of fish. So it worked. I've got enough to chill these. I just don't have as much as I would normally have on a commercial trip, but those are the two reasons we're gonna get them. Well, we are gonna call it. All in all, a great day. It's only 10 o'clock. We still got time for breakfast. Had one more come in. Super curious. I probably could have taken a shot on it. I just, I've got two in the boat. I didn't want to get greedy. Um, but yeah, we're done out here. We'll get this fish, these fish cleaned up and have some Wahoo for dinner. I think of everything we get down here, they're probably maybe top, maybe number one favorite fish to eat that we get down here. Um, at least top two, but we're going to head back and we'll see you at the dock. So because we shot this and came home so early or quickly, uh, the meat hadn't completely rested or cooled. So we let it sit on ice for about four hours, four or five hours. And I uh, came back down and we're gonna play it up now. I'm gonna show you my preferred way to do this. I like to take them down in sections. I just think it's a little easier. And you can feel the difference of the fish when you've let it rest. It will be a physical difference feeling it and then you'll also notice the color. I shake this way. Play straight down, just like you play a normal fish. You go all the way through to the backbone. And normally I would start up here or down there, but I want to show you a nice thick piece. I can get I can get by it. So through to the backbone and then kind of come down so I'm not missing anything. One of the best fish. One of the best fish we have eaten down here. So there you go. Get those ribs out. And these bellies are actually great to smoke. Once they get a little bigger, this guy's a little thin, but you can still get some meat out of there. It's almost like Almost like tuna, but it's not definitely not as uh, tender as the Toro. And once I've got it here, come straight down the center, all the way down to the skin, and out. And there's my Wahoo loin. And because I've taken it straight off the skin and into the bag, I don't actually rinse these in salt water. A lot of times. Certain flays I'll go to salt water, but it's, it, it depends. You can do these in salt water, but if I can keep them clean away from the skin and off the cutting board, I don't mind it. Whew. That is beautiful. One of my favorite fish. I'm gonna finish this up and I'll see you in the kitchen. And a sleepy tuna. A sleepy tuna. And we are in the kitchen. So we have got our Wahoo. I'm a big fan of cooking these in medallions. If you've never cooked Wahoo, I talked about this a while ago. It's an incredible fish, extremely versatile, but when you actually cook it, um, it's very easy to dry out. So you almost have to undercook it and let it finish itself uh, once you pull it off. So I like to do medallions, all the same thickness. And, uh, and if you're unfamiliar with doing this, do one as a tester and then go from there. But tonight we are doing Wahoo. Um, got some rice, some asparagus, and kind of the star of the show is this sauce. I did this in the Iron Chef cook-off with Will. It's award-winning sauce. Oh yeah, <laughs> award-winning. Um, I did it a couple weeks ago with Will, but not all you guys were over there and I wanted to do this again just in case you missed it. And uh, this is once it's cooked down, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes depending on how thick you like it. So you start by melting butter in a pan, add shallots and garlic, um, cook that down for about two minutes, and then you're gonna add, I actually use lobster stock that we made. Um, you can use clam base if you don't have lobster stock, and add about a cup of heavy whipping cream, and uh, mix that all up and kinda just cook it down until it reduces and gets a little thick. Add a little bit of salt, pepper, and that's what it looks like. So I've got this guy coming up, our cast iron. We're gonna do some asparagus as well, like I said. Once this guy gets 
where I want it, we will start our Wahoo. One thing I did forget in the sauce is um, add a little bit of cooking sherry, or if you actually have real sherry, throw some in there. So I've got my Wahoo medallions. Hmm, we'll call that, I don't know, three quarters of an inch-ish thick. And time is of the essence here, because like I said, if you overcook these and they dry out, they are not enjoyable. Um, I like doing it in a cast iron or a nonstick pan. They're, it's really good on the grill, but you really got to know your grill and um, got to stay on top of it if you do it on the grill. It's a lot easier for me in this pan because I can get it, get it where I want it. Only about a medium heat, medium to high heat. Again, if you're not comfortable with this, do a tester first. Um, I've even got to a point where if you get used to your heat in your pan and the thickness of your fillets, you can do this with a stopwatch and it's almost perfect, but I um, feel kind of confident. Hope I don't mess this up. You'll see, it's about a minute 45 on the first side. Once you flip it over, you're gonna see these, that translucent disappears pretty quickly. And this side is going to go fairly quick. All right, there we are. So like I said, being repetitive, but I really don't want you to mess up your Wahoo. Pull them off, let them sit two minutes, they'll finish cooking through. And uh, hopefully they're still moist inside and we'll get this plate put together. All right, so I'm going to call my shot here. I'm gonna break one of these open and see if it's see if it's proper. So pull it off just barely. Oh, that's gorgeous. Just barely underdone, and they will finish themselves. So that's right where I want it. Just in case you didn't see, loses that translucence. It's still moist in there. Wahoo dries out so easily, so very easily. Oh, and I can't remember if I said what I put on the. Wahoo, it was just salt and pepper and um, a little bit of that stuff. Just a little bit of spice. That is yours. I'm gonna make mine. Ooh, wow, we're, we're babe. Taste this. this is very professional. Oh, hold on, hold on. I gotta make mine. Oh, we've got a sleeping pearl. <laughs> very rare. She's like, what's happening? <laughs> gonna borrow your spot for a sec, bro. All right, give it a go. So I actually haven't tried this. I've done the sauce, haven't, uh, newly the sauce. Haven't done it with the Wahoo and the rice. Babe, babe, cooked to perfection. Oh boy. Delicious as always. That one's going in the book. I didn't get any with sauce on it. I wanted to try it without the sauce. You literally put that sauce on anything. And it's so easy to make. So incredibly easy to make. You know what would be good in that sauce? Hmm. Not that I'm trying to change your oh, sauce. Oh, here we go. <laughs> um, throwing some capers in it. Yeah, a little bit of salt. Mm-hmm. I love salt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a problem. We know that. This is good, babe. I can dig it. Mm. Wow. And the sauce isn't too much. It's like not a heavy sauce. No. Whew. Well, that is all we've got. First Wahoo of the year. Favorite. Season, rather. We we're actually headed out tomorrow. We're going to try for Madeline's first Wahoo. Let's hope. So we'll keep an eye out for that video, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully I'm not going to can... miss this time. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we find some. She can get a shot. But we'll see you guys on the next one. Any questions, leave in the comments as always. And we will see you later. Mmm. This is really good, babe. The seasoning's perfect with the sauce, yeah. too. Yeah, a little spice. Mm-hmm. I think that's a I could have done a little more spice, but I feel I'm like that's the trick. It. It's like 
doing a spice with a, like a kind of a flavors that disagree neutral but agree. sauce. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I could put that sauce on anything. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. So good. Good job, babe. I'll give it four stars. Four stars. <laughs>